happy 108. And 108 is a number that I first found significant when I was teaching yoga many years ago. It's it's a lot of what we're going to be talking about is based in Hinduism and Buddhism. <clears throat> but there's it's it's like any excavation of our history. There's so much cool significance that uh, I get the sense that all civilizations knew the, the significance of this number and it's very much related to sacred geometry. So we're gonna do a little <clears throat> history excavation that hopefully what you'll find interesting. We're gonna loop it back to this year and then we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do a meditation uh, with Amala and I'll, I'll get to why. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna share my screen. And uh, give you guys something to look at while we explore what, what this is about. Let me make sure y'all are muted. Okay. So here we have a picture of a Nautilus shell. I love this. Leonardo Fibonacci. I'll, um, he was born on 1170 AD. <clears throat> He's the one that gave us the information about the Fibonacci sequence, the spiral of the Nautilus, the spiral of the pine cones, the spiral of, we've all seen the pictures in Mother Nature of how this particular sequence is everywhere. And it's one of the most prominent mathematical formulas. The sequence is just the sum of the two numbers that precede it. So zero plus one is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, and so on. <clears throat> and it's been re reported to be something called nature's secret code. Uh, it just so happens, well, so, so then, and also there's something that many ancient cultures used, especially in Egypt and India, it's called decimal parity. Decimal parity is numerology as we see, know it today. It's the sum of a number. So 108 would equal nine. The number 377 would be three plus seven plus seven, 117. So the idea was that you would add the numbers to get the essence of what that number was communicating to you. So it was really one through nine. And when we <clears throat> use decimal parity in the Fibonacci sequence, the first 24 numbers, we get 108. And what this picture shows us about the Nautilus is that there's actually a 1.08 constant grow rate, which is what makes this shell be able to grow in such a beautiful sequence. So using nature as a bouncing off point for the meaning of numbers, uh, you know, we can look at the what we know about in even modern numerology, where we have zero and one, the nothingness and the oneness, the I am number would be one, the zero would be infinite possibility, eight, is, you know, I talk about it as an infinity loop on its side, uh, its inner strength, it's a sign of um, wisdom. But then when we add them together, 108 equals nine. Nine in numerology is, many would say the highest number, the number of completion. It's almost like a very Plutonian number, death and rebirth. It buzzes with uh, endings and new beginnings. So let's go to something a little bit more interesting now. So 108 is, uh, there's a gentleman, and I'll share his book in a second, James Ross Goodby. Uh, his book is called The Still Point, and he's got a Nautilus on the scar. I'll show when I take my screen share off. But if we look at this image, um, we're going to watch a video from him next, a little snippet, because I just think he's such a cool guy. But look at what this image is saying. So the distance between the Earth and the moon is 108 moons. The human body has 108 chakras. The distance between the earth and the sun is 108 suns. The size of the sun is 108 earths. That in and of itself is something that I find really cool. So here's the book, James Ross Goodby. And I wanna share with you guys, I'm gonna stop the recording right now because I don't know if copyright will let me um, actually share, cause I want this to be shared on. Okay, so what was just shared is a video by James Ross Goodby. I'll put the link in the 
just on the screen right here. And it's also going to be a link in the text for this YouTube. This is a, this is James's YouTube video. So I don't want to pretend like this is my YouTube video. So I'm not going to include it in my video. I'm going to send you to that video where the clip starts and you can watch. And it's just exactly what, um, it's not just exactly, it's an expansion from where we left off, where we left off. Let me start my screen share again. Um, was with the, the 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 unique and sacred relationship, and James talks about it as a a non coincidental. Scientists cannot explain. Um, he even relates it to the 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 Great Pyramid at Giza and how Giza is related to the Great Pyramid is related to the the, the beautiful relationship between the sun and uh, I mean the Earth and the Moon, and how the 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 moon and the sun also have their own relationship and it's all around this sacred geometry he calls it the still point the still point is um his word for the seed of intelligence before anything's created and if we think about what i we were talking about the fibonacci sequence and how the 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 fibonacci spirals that we see in nature and that are ever present are the seeding points and they just continue to manifest and grow and support life forms so so let's go ahead and, and keep going here um this part of the recording is post gathering because i forgot to push record so there's a little bit of a rambunctious dog here i'll see if i can get keep this going so we're going to go next to i mentioned that this 108 is it's pervasive <laughs> everywhere um, so we talked about it in, in numerologies. This is the Sri Yantra. The Sri Yantra is that image that it said, if you, if you meditate on this for a long enough period of time, just by meditating and staring at this image, you will achieve enlightenment, um, or the ascension process. And the, in this Yantra, there are marmas. Marmas are points where three lines intersect. There's 54 marmas in the Sri Yantra, and they're understood to, uh, each marma has an intersection of masculine and feminine energies, the Shiva and the Shakti energies. That gives us 108 energetic power points in this mantra that uh, supports enlightenment. Another power point is the heart chakra. The heart chakra is known to have 108 nadis. Nadis are the sub subtle nerve channels. Um, so the Sri Yantra and the heart are both um, embedded with the number 108. Let's get to the mala that I mentioned we're gonna be using a mala for this meditation. There's 108 in Buddhism. I mentioned they have mala beads or malas with 108 beads on it. They understand that um, Buddhism has 108 defilements or illusions. Uh, there's 108 ways to get over those defilements or illusions so as to achieve enlightenment. Some of their practices include carving 108 little Buddhas out of walnuts and placing them in a row for good luck and, and blessings. And it, let's, let's keep going here. I want to um, keep up the interest. So uh, there's in Jainism, the 108 is also very significant. They believe that their ascended beings have 108 wonderful attributes. In Christianity, uh, you can find 108 in the Bible uh, in the subtext of the, the books that we know that are in print. It's, it's more obvious apparently in some of the books that are also potentially a part of the Bible, but not available in the modern version. But for example, Lazarus was um, apparently pronounced, he was dead for exactly 108 hours before Jesus resurrected him. Something interesting uh, for anyone who was raised Catholic, I was raised Catholic, the rosary is actually 54 beads. There's 10 beads and then there's one big, 10 small beads and one big bead. And so if you take the, the rosary is a half of a mala. But if you, if you take the loop of the whole rosary and you double it, you would have uh, 54 plus 54 is 108 beads. Sikhs also have a mala that has 108 nice, ties in it, excuse me. And then the periodic table, which is interesting. I looked this up last night. It's, it's the Vedic science periodic table has 108 elements. If you look at the periodic table in the modern world, it's between 103 and 118. 108 elements in the Vedic traditions are what they say are the stable elements. Um, so apparently some of the more modern elements are not necessarily stable, but there's potentially 108 
elements that make the basis for our world. Um, in geometry, one example is the pentagon. The pentagon is a sacred geometric protection shape. All the angles of the pentagon equal 108 degrees. Uh, protection and creation is what this symbol is actually used for. Another uh, symbol would be the five-pointed star. So if you look at this five-pointed star, this is a version of us. If you stand with your arms out and your feet wider than your hips, and you can think about your fingertips, the top of the head, and your feet as the points of the star, our body creates a five-pointed star. And the five-pointed star is it, the Vitruvian man kind of, uh, as you can see, symbolizes this, but um, there's 108 degree angles staring back at us from everywhere on this five-pointed star. So not only is it in our heart, not only is it in many of the sacred texts, but it's in the way that we uh, can, a shape that we can naturally establish and manifest. And I wanna offer again that this, this number 108, well, here's, here's some interesting, this, this is just a list. Um, pardon me, I forgot to take spell check off of here, but you know, the repetitions of a mantra, the types of meditation, the Rosicrucians thought that there was 108 uh, years in the time frame. So there's there's a lot of ways that 108 can be seen as not only a sacred number, but a number of communication and a number of blessing of creation. If we think about the Nautilus shell that we started with, 1.08 is the number that it iterates out. It naturally just continues to create this beautiful, uh, very symbiotic, very balanced spirals. So does the pine cone. So do a lot of things, the sunflower, many forms in nature will use this shape. So it's a, it's a manifesting form. It's a seeding form. And we're going to use this in a meditation now to, um, um, to seed an intention for 20 23. So let's also get to the, the significance of 2023. The numerology of 2023, when we reduce it, uh, 2023 uh, equals the number seven. And the number seven is a beautiful number in um, in this time frame that we live in, because seven is a quest for knowledge number. It's a, um, it's a, number sacred to every major religion. It's, it's a number for, for seeking wisdom and higher consciousness and intelligence. So if we marry the idea of 108 as this manifesting number that we can, what we're gonna do is do a meditation with 108 breaths. This is what they do in many Buddhist and Hindu traditions. And that's why there's 108 yoga cycles in a sacred sun cycle salutation. But we're gonna create a, uh, an intention for this year with the backdrop that this year is about the quest for ancient knowledge, the remembering. As I like to say, the remembering of, of who we are. And I wanna invite you to start to consider a, your mantra but don't be too attached to it just yet. The mantra might form into words as you're practicing the meditation. So you might also consider if there's just a vibration that is your intention for this day for the rest of this year. You can send as many intentions as you like. We're doing this on January 8th to harness the power of remembering the, the, the beauty and the significance of 108. And what we're going to do is we're going to take 108 intentional breaths and I'm going to use my mala that I've, this is my personal mala that I made for myself to count the breaths. And, and the mala is uh, made with the idea that you don't want your mind to get stuck in counting. You want to be simply harnessing all of your awareness and cultivating that vibration of what it is that you're seeking to seed with these 108 breaths. So we're gonna breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the mouth. And you can turn your camera on or off. You're gonna to wanna to uncross your legs, uncross your arms so that you're in open circuit. And you're just gonna start by taking a nice deep breath and coming into your body.
and we're exhaling through the mouth, breathing in through the nose. And maybe just get a little curious about what the, what, what the intention might be. Maybe it's not obvious yet. Maybe you know, maybe you don't. Would be well. And gathering together in circle is a supercharged, powerful thing for everyone who's doing it in the present and everyone who finds this recording later. And you don't have to worry about counting the breaths. I just want us to notice what your, what your own personal intention is for this moment in time for the rest of this year. Maybe there's words, maybe there's an image, maybe it's just a vibration. And as you breathe in, imagine that you're breathing energy into that intention. And you are the vessel. So it's as if you're taking prana into your vessel. That's your intention. The exhale is gonna be sending that intention out. So breathing in as if you're taking the light of source, the light of the universe into your vessel. And that light is meeting whatever it is you're vibrating about, the set of words, the image, the feeling. And as you exhale, you're sending that out. So we're gonna do this 108 times, breathing in and breathing out. And you don't have to count the breaths, just let it be. It's gonna take about eight to 10 minutes for us to do this. So every inhale is as if you're pulling fresh prana in. And every exhale is as if you're sending the energetic signature of your intention out. As you inhale, your field is what's, you're creating the vibration of what it is you want to manifest. Energy comes in and then you send it out. So see if you can just kind of get into a rhythm with that. And maybe you even imagine your own hands moving across a mala so that you're not counting, you're just breathing, focusing and imagining as is the case, fresh energy, vital energy comes in every inhale. It meets your vessel, your vibration, your seating intention. Every exhale sends it out. I mentioned in Tibetan Buddhism, they have the concept of the wind horses that take the intentions in the prayer flags and send them out into the universe. So every exhale is like sending out that intention. So just continue breathing in. And breathing out, I'm going to talk a little bit less as we drop in a little deeper, but I want to make sure that everybody just gets the sense of what we're doing. 108 breath, seating meditation, seating precisely what it is you want to manifest this year, this moment in time. And you're breathing in through your nose, and you're releasing through your mouth. And the power of the gathering, all of us together are supporting each other's intentions. We don't need to know what they are in our mind's eye. We know that everyone's got their own unique vibration and we're doing this together on this auspicious day. And just imagine your field is humming with whatever the vibration it is that you want to seed today Every inhale, fresh energy comes into your field, receives the vibration of what it is you want to manifest. Every exhale, you're sending it out into the universe with that intention. No need to count your breaths. Just let your breath be easy. Let your breath be gentle. Let it feel good and natural and normal. Breathing in through the nose. Breathing out through the mouth. And just visualizing yourself, your field as humming with your intention, your vibration, your visual vision or words, whatever intention you're setting for this year, you are creating that vibration. Inhale, fresh energy comes in, meets that vibration. Exhale send that intention out. 
And we're doing this 108 times, breathing in. Fresh air, fresh energy meets you, your vessel, setting that intention, receiving that vibration, breathing out, sending it out into the ether. Breathing in. And breathing out. And maybe you're really able to refine the vibration of whatever intention it is that you're setting for this year. And maybe it's beyond words, maybe it's just the vibration. And every inhale, that fresh energy is met with your vibration, receives that vibration, exhale, it goes out into the ether, out into the universe. You are this vessel that is created as a manifesting vessel. And we're using this number, this sacred geometric number to give 108 breaths to our intention, knowing that that number is what creates everything in our world, essentially is kind of what we glossed over in my presentation. Breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth. And also knowing that gathering together we're doing this in an exponential way in circle. Just a couple more minutes here. We're moving along the beads of the mala. Inhaling, fresh energy comes into your field. Your field gives the energetic signature of your intention. Exhaling, you're sending it out into the universe, seeding that intention 108 times with your breath. Breathing in through the nose, sending it out through the mouth. And again, maybe you can feel another layer of settling in, refining, and also beginning to receive the reality of that vibration. The more we vibrate, the law of attraction gives us what we're vibrating about. So we're choosing to vibrate on this intention for 108 sacred number of breaths. And maybe you can even feel your body relax or get a little bit higher vibration. Got about 15 more breaths here. Not that you need to count, but just a few more breaths here. Breathing in through the nose. Fresh energy receives your vibration. Exhale through your mouth, send that vibration out. We'll take about three more breaths here. With the same pattern. And then just slowly coming back to the gathering. Coming back to the 
the circle of people gathered. And notice, notice how you're feeling. Notice if you can already tell a little bit of it starting, that vibration doesn't feel so foreign since you just spent 108 breaths on it. And maybe it feels a little less out there and a little more available. So I mentioned we're doing this on 108, depending on where you're at. In Eastern time, you did it around 108 p.m. You could do this again at 108 your time. But also, you know, there's 108 mala beads in the mala. You can do this anytime. You can, I love to create my own malas. And the idea with the repetition of the sacred number is that it infuses it with the wisdom of that sacred geometry. For, for those of you that were joined a little bit later, the first part of this was a presentation about all the different ways that the number 108 has been discovered and understood to be sacred across cultures throughout the world. And I believe there's a lot more than what I presented, but I love that when you get those hits of it being pretty much everywhere, I forgot to mention it's also um, the diameter of Stonehenge. Um, and it's, the, it's in the Great Pyramid at Giza. It's in the Vitruvian Man. So, and it's, and, and it's in the proportions of the earth and the sun and the moon and how far they are and how big they are relative to each other. It's in the flower of life to give you a little recap for those who join later, but there'll be a recording. And so just kind of sitting with that and we're in this point at 2023 where we don't know the answers. And that's a very, why this is also relevant right now because we still kind of almost only know what we're leaving but we can feel with our vibration what is true. And that is when I've been, we've been understanding that, you know, in the future, we're going to need to use our energetic sensitivities to navigate with ease and joy and light this year and throughout the future. That this type of knowing and getting comfortable with the not knowing, because, but it's not that we will we'll never know, but realizing that there's more to be discovered. And so this presentation is kind of more like, a, oh, this sounds interesting. That's how it feels to me when I share it. And I do believe that this year in particular, being the number seven year is going to be a year for us to receive the downloads and the wisdom of everything that's already present for us, everything we've already maybe touched on or had a thought about, or maybe there's some things that we're gonna discover, but it's gonna feel very much like a remembering because none of this information is rocket science. It's all very fundamental and very much back to the way the Nautilus shell is built as we started this gathering and the way the earth and the sun and the moon are aligned and the way our heart chakra is built with 108 nadis. So all those things, thinking about that number and how sacred we are and how sacred this time is and it's not a religious necessarily version of sacred it's a because we exist sacred and that type of i think it's kind of almost like a new religion and alchemy to me seems like a very old version of a religion before church and state kind of separated things out but i love the idea of the sacredness of being alive the sacredness of taking 108 breaths so that that concludes my presentation I don't know if anybody has anything to share. Um, thank you all for joining impromptu. This We had a wonderful number of people who were able to join live. Anybody have anything they want to share before we get on our way? Huh, Gail, I see that you're trying to gently tell me to push record again. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well then, um, in the link, if you if you want to look up James Ross Goodby, this is his this is one this is his book. Um, but I'm I'm gonna put in the in the YouTube link. I'm not gonna be able to show that video because that's his video. But I'm gonna put a link to that whole video, and it's really kind of fun to grab a cup of coffee and just listen to this man talk. He lives um, 
off the grid in the middle of nowhere in Nevada. And he's this tremendous mathematician and I love to hear him. And it's just this year, I've, I've had this book for many, 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 it's 2018 when it was published, just this year where it really also for me started to make sense. So thank you guys for, for joining. Lauren says, thank you for explaining the knowledge and the practice. You're welcome. Thank you for joining me with the practice. It's, it's a beautiful time to be alive and I'm glad that we're all coming together in circle. Anybody else have anything else? You're welcome. Thank you guys. Ah, I'm so blessed to have everybody hop on and prompt you. This made my day. And I think it's going to be, you know, your gift is also your gift of a presence is a gift to everyone else who watches this later, because we're kind of forming the first seed of an expanding circle of light around this particular topic and this particular practice. So thank you guys for joining live and happy, uh, blessed January 8th and blessed 2023. Tons of love. Um, I, oh, I had, if you're still there, I had something to say. If that's okay. Yeah, do it. Uh, thank you so much, first off. And also, when I joined, it said there were eight participants in the meeting, which I thought was funny. There's one you and eight participants. I think there's more now, but <laughs> it was a special reminder. And then also, do you mind putting the link for the presentation that was near the beginning? Or, um, yeah, that presentation is going to be, because I forgot to push record, I'm going to re-record it and include it in the video. So you're going to be able to see it in the YouTube video. I get this. I, I have to like put a post-it note. I get so excited about the presentation that I kind of lose my logical mind of recording. It. I, <laughs> I love it. It's a magical. Your meditations are always a magical experience. It's really special. Thank oh, thank you. you. Thank you, Katie. I appreciate your sharing. That's awesome. You made my day. I was going to say that I, I uh, appreciated the time because I, I uh, was able to formulate some words, you know, over that period of time for the 108 um, uh, go rounds of breathing. Mm -hmm. so I kind of had some words to begin with and then they became more solid. Yeah, that's why what was coming through was like it's a vibration and then it's kind of refining itself and um and I think it's great that it, you know, we're so conditioned into, well, am I going to stop eating chocolate or am I going to stop eating coffee? And that's all, that's the limits of our next year, you know, and it's really so much more than that. It's like, okay, let's get to the vibration and then let kind of like you, like your experience, like let some of the words start to coalesce. So thank you for sharing. That was kind of what was happening for me too. So that's perfect. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Heidi. Yes. Anybody else have anything they want to share? All right, precious group of people, you made my day. Um, and like I said, you made so many other people's days. So uh, be blessed, have a fabulous Sunday. I appreciate you and um, yeah, tons of love.